This video is a recording from the Men Improvement Podcast, brought to you by menprovement.com, the number one self improvement resource strictly for men. Go there today to see all podcasts, improve yourself as a man, and get access to three free ebooks, including one that will help you triple your testosterone naturally. Thank you and enjoy. Ready to take your life to the next level? Then you're in the right place. Get all the information you need to be better, improve everything, and live life like a pro. This is the Men Improvement Podcast with Sean Russell. Welcome back to the Men Improvement Podcast, brought to you by menprovement.com, the number one self improvement resource strictly for men. Head there after the show to get your free self-improvement starter kit, including your free ebook on how to triple your testosterone naturally. Today's show is a little bit different. It's just going to be me, your host, talking about a program that I developed, which is essentially a framework, 10 steps that apply to any area of self-improvement. I opted out of getting a guest for this podcast because I think it's going to be a lot easier for me to explain this to you in about 45 minutes than if I had someone on here talking back and forth. But first, I want to go into a little bit of background about how I created this framework. So for the last two years, I have been completely dedicated and obsessed with self-improvement and figuring out how to improve my own life and help others do the same. I've listened to over 1,000 podcasts, read countless books. Like Instead of watching movies, I'm watching documentaries and YouTube videos to find out and study the science of how people can be the best versions of themselves. And during this time, I kept noticing things that repeated, that people kept talking about over and over, and it was a core 10 steps. And then in the last six months, I found that by applying all these steps to my life in a foundation it had a ridiculous impact on my output. And in the last six months, I am pretty much a completely different person. I have added so many incredible habits into my life and it is just oozing success out of me. Like, seriously, these steps I feel are so powerful. And if you can incorporate this foundation that I'm about to go over into whatever you want to do, whether it be losing weight or getting women, or just being successful in general, you are going to be amazed at the results. Seriously, imagine having a formula that could get you anything you wanted in months to a year's time. Imagine you waking up in your awesome apartment, looking out over the beach with a beautiful girl on your bed, if that's your goal. Imagine waking up and looking in the mirror and seeing that chiseled six-pack that you have never been able to reveal. Or just imagine not having to worry about your bills and having as much money as you can possibly want. I truly believe that this formula can do that for you. It just takes time and it takes discipline. And it was very hard to figure out something that was so general that could be applied to anything. But I think I have done it. And before we jump into the show, I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors, ownonly.com. Now, ownonly.com is a online custom suit retailer and I just want to tell you about my experience with them. They contacted me and they told me they wanted me to check out one of their suits so I agreed and I got one of their suits in the mail three weeks later and it's absolutely beautiful and it's custom and fit to my body. All I had to do was go on their website and pick out one of their $300 suits which is not expensive at all and follow their easy instructions to take my own measurements in my living room input them into the fields and then pick whatever trimmings I want on the suit to make it my own I even got to engrave my name and my company name inside of the jacket and then I hit okay three weeks later I got a custom suit with a brush a heavy duty hanger and a whole bunch of other cool knickknacks that fits amazing and it's built to my body and no one else so go to ownonly.com and get a custom suit fit to your body that's just as cheap as any suits in department stores, but that's high quality and has no tailoring fees to trim down and make it your own. And if you use the coupon code MPSUIT, you're going to get $30 off your order over $200. So check them out at ownonly.com. Now, before we jump into the show, I just want to say 
that I really believe that this stuff's going to work. And I would recommend taking a pen and paper out and writing down these 10 steps. And forgive me for being super mellow while I'm recording the show. I had a long day, just had a great workout, came back at night and decided that I really wanted to get this out. So I'm pretty chilled out. I hope it helps you relax and just enjoy it. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into this life-changing podcast, the 10 steps to improving any area of your life that correlate to any goal you might have. Okay, guys, I hope you're ready for this because here I've got laid out the 10 steps to completely changing your life. And these could literally change your life. Just to give a little forward you know, these steps are, some of them are very easy and you could start doing them tomorrow and some of them are going to take time to turn into habits. So don't get down on yourself if you get discouraged, but I encourage you to take out a pen and paper and write each one of these steps down and put this on your wall after the show just to be a constant reminder of what you could be doing on a daily basis and what you can apply to anything because it makes it easier. And I guarantee if you did that and you thought about it more than once in six months, these steps would be automated for you as they are for me now and just having an incredible impact on your life. So we'll jump into it. The first step is called deciding to take the wheel. Now what this means is that your entire life has brought you to where you are right now listening to this podcast And if you haven't already decided to take the wheel per se, then you are exactly who you are because of the hundreds of external influences that have shaped you in the man that you are today. You've been shaped by teachers, parents, society, the media, and your friends, and they've all had a huge impact on who you have become. Even before you're five years old, you're shaped into the person that you are becoming. So part of who you are now is not completely up to you. And your whole life, you've been told by society not to be different. Don't raise your hand in class. Don't speak out of turn. Get a good job with a steady salary and save for retirement. So the first step is to take responsibility of your life and say, okay, I accept who I've become due to all the external influences on me. And I choose to take responsibility for my life and take the wheel. Once you make this choice, You can become anyone you want and choose to no longer let any external influences shape you, but you are the engineer and you are building your destiny. This is one of the most important mindsets in self-improvement because because if you don't have it, then you're still continuously being shaped by external influences and you're never going to become the person you want to be. So that's step number one take the wheel. Step number two is setting your mental GPS. And I didn't mean to make these all car references, but the first two seem to be. Setting your mental GPS means set a clear vision of who you want to be. If you're living your life without a clear vision of who you want to be, it's like driving around the USA without a map or GPS. You may have a great time, like a lot of people do in college, But at the end of your journey, you can either end up someplace awesome like Las Vegas or you can end up somewhere like Milwaukee. And in relation to real life, that's like people waking up when they're 35 in a job that they hate going, how the fuck did I get here? So by setting your mental GPS, you're going to have to actually sit down and figure out who it is you want to be. So like I said, this applies to any area of your life. If you, if you want to do something as simple as losing weight, you sit down and you write down exactly who you want to be. I want to be a thin guy who can keep up with his kids, go out, play sports, do whatever. If you want to get girls, you write down exactly who you want to be. I want to be the kind of guy who can go up to any beautiful girl and make her laugh and have a natural conversation with her and just have an abundance of sex and joy in my life. And if it's just in general, like your big goal, who you want to be, the owner of this company, like who can travel the world and, you know, influences millions of people every day, then that's what you would write down. But you sit down 
And this is an exercise. Get down a piece of paper and on one page or however many pages it takes, write down the ideal version of yourself that you want to become in your life. What are you doing? Who are you with? How does it feel? This is so, so important because there's no way you're going to achieve your goals if you don't have a clear vision of what they are. So that's actually part A to number two. And part B to number two is figuring out your why. This is so powerful. And there's books written on this subject alone. There's coaches who won't work with their clients unless they have a distinct why they want to do it. Why do you want to lose 30 pounds? Why do you want to be successful and own your own business and travel the world? You know, there's a quote that is, why find the why that makes you cry. And I actually just heard this on a podcast. And it's so true because if you don't know why you want to do what you're trying to do, then there's no emotion connected to it. And it's very unlikely that you'll get there. So why do you want to get all these girls? Why do you want to be a master pickup artist? Why do you want to lose weight? Why do you want to make $10 million? Why do you want to do this? Sit down and really think about it. Get really deep and get emotional about it. And this is going to really make a lasting impact on you. Now, for anyone out there who doesn't know what they want to do with their life, what I suggest that you do is first think about if you're just waiting for permission to do what you want to do. Because I think deep down, a lot of people know what they want to do, but they don't think they're allowed. They may be working a normal nine to five job and they might, you know, they know what they want to do. They don't want to be doing that, but they just don't think it's possible. Well, it is possible and it just may take some time and you have to start doing it on the side. But if you truly don't know what you want to do, you got to sit down and you got to write down what you love to do on a piece of paper. What gets you excited? What would you love to do and wake up every morning? And I mean, what would you like to wake up every morning and do? And what would get you excited to go to bed tonight? Clearly, it's not your job now if you don't know what you want to do. So then figure out like five things that you just love to do that you're passionate about in life. And then you need to figure out a way that you can provide value to others doing what you love to do because you can make money doing anything if you can provide value to others it could be providing value in the in the context of information it could be providing value with products it could be providing value with services and consulting or anything but this is what i recommend for people who don't know what they want to do so that's step two setting your mental gps now step three is very similar and it's making yourself accountable. So now that you've decided to take the wheel and be in charge of who you become in your life and you've set a clear vision of who it is you actually want to be, I want you to make yourself accountable and set your goals. Now, I'm kind of stealing this from Lewis Howes because I really like the way he does this. And I learned about this on the School of Greatness podcast, but what he does is he sets his goals for like the year and he'll write them down on a piece of paper he'll sign them and then he'll frame them and put them on his wall now what this does is it makes you accountable for your goals you're making them real you're setting them and you're going to see them every day and if you don't achieve them then you're going to you know you're going to be accountable for that and you're going to you're going to know that it was up to you you set your goals and you didn't want to do what you had to do to get there but if you know if you don't achieve your goals all the way, it's fine. Like if your goal is to make a million dollars next year and you make 800,000, it's fine. As long as you did everything you could to achieve your goals. So that's the next step to make yourself accountable. And you can take it even further and make yourself accountable to the public. You can go on Facebook, you can tell your friends, Hey guys, you know, I'm quitting my job and I'm going to become, you know, an entrepreneur and travel the world. I'm telling you guys now. So if you don't see me hanging out with you guys every weekend, it's because I'm hustling my ass off. Now you're now you're making yourself accountable to your friends and you're making your goals even more real. You're sharing your visions with the world and now you got to go do it. Some uh, other recommendations for your goal setting because it's a very powerful thing for you to do. The first is to 10x your goals. Now I just spoke about, you know, feeling bad if you don't hit your goals and how If you really work hard, you shouldn't feel bad if you don't hit your goals. But Grant Cardone likes to tell his clients and listeners to 10x their goals. So if your goal is to make $1 million next year, set the goal to make $10 million next year. You know why? You're going to have to work a lot harder. And you might not hit that goal. 
but you might make three million. And then you blew by your last goal of making one million. I think it's a really powerful technique if you're into it. And the other recommendation is to have your big goal that you have on the wall of the year or five years or six months or however long it is, however long you think it's going to take you to get there. And then have mini goals, mini goals that you set for yourself that will help keep you motivated along the way because it's a long road in self-improvement. And if your goal is to lose 100 pounds, you're going to you're gonna be burnt out after six months if you've only lost 30 pounds, which is really an incredible thing to do. But if you set a goal for like, hey, I'm going to lose the first 10 pounds in two months and you do it, it's like, bam, you just completed your goal. Now you move forward to another mini goal. This is very powerful. Step four is to reverse engineer your goals. So starting from the beginning, we decided to take control of our lives. We've got a clear vision of who we want to be, and we've set our goals and made them real and made ourselves accountable. Now, how do we get there? This is what reverse engineering is all about. You need to write down and brainstorm everything that you need to do day in and day out to become this person. What do you have to do day in and day out to lose 30 pounds? What do you have to do day in and day out to get great with women? These are just two examples, but this applies to any area. And we're going to jump back to this, our reverse engineering, a little bit later. But step five is to create automation and a successful environment based on your goals. So I don't know if you know this, but 45% of what we do every day is habitually automatic. That ranges from small habits like answering your phone when you hear it rings all the way to big habits like choosing to meditate or bad habits like watching porn. There's so many things that we do habitually every day that are just completely automatic. And the way a habit works is it's three parts. You get you get an urge, something that happens. Say you you know, you hear your phone, get a text message. Then you have a reaction, what you do. You look at your phone to read your text message. Then you have a reward for what you do and the reward in this case is that you you know you feel good you just saw a text from your friends and it was cool it wasn't something negative you didn't answer your text and look at it and get like shocked so there was some sort of reward involved and even in bad habits there are rewards involved so your brain forms a habit because it you know it gets associated with the reward and typically it takes, you know, they say 18 to 66 days to form a solid habit, depending on what it is. But what I'm getting at here is imagine if every last percentage of your 45% of daily habits was geared towards your success instead of being filled with bad habits. Now, I'm not talking about answering text, text messages here, but I'm talking about things like eating junk food and watching porn and hitting the snooze button. Imagine if you could Take all these bad habits out and replace them with incredible habits like making your bed each morning, meditating, taking cold showers, eating healthy, going out to exercise. You know, if your goals are to lose weight and you have a habit of waking up every morning and exercising, it's huge. And if your goals are to be great with women and you have a habit of approaching every hot girl you see, no matter what it is, no matter what you say, it's huge. And this is kind of hard. So how can you do this? The first step is to become mindful of what you do on a daily basis right now. You need to be constantly asking yourself, what am I doing and why am I doing it? And then if once you become mindful, this is a habit in itself, you'll start to see that, wow, this really doesn't affect me in a positive way. So you need to start eliminating bad habits. And then you need to start incorporating good habits. And the way you do this successfully is to start small. If you want to be in the habit of exercising. A lot of guys who are big habit speakers and write books on it talk about making very, very small habits. So for example, instead of saying, okay, I'm going to get up and work out every day, you'd say, okay, I'm going to get up and I'm going to do one push up every day or one sit up every day. How easy is that? After a month, that's a habit. You're going to wake up and you'll be like walking and you'll be like, oh, I didn't do my push-up yet. Let me do it. Then you feel good. You get your reward. You're like, I did my habit for the day. And eventually you can add on to that habit and go out for a run or do 10 push-ups or 20 push-ups. 
And that's how you can form a habit by doing something very small in the beginning first couple of months. So I want you to think about what kind of habits you can form that will propel you towards success. And some one-size-fits-all habits that I recommend that we'll talk about later are meditation and being ruthlessly clean and organized. But we're going to talk about those later and how they can benefit anyone, no matter what their goal is. The next part of part five, habit creation and shaping your environment, is to shape your environment to fuel success. If you want to lose 100 pounds every day, you shouldn't have a bowl of M&Ms sitting on your kitchen counter. Because what's going to happen? You're going to go, you're going to take those M&Ms every day and you're going to get a reward because you're going to feel good. You just had some M&Ms. Mm, you might feel guilty after, but you'll get an instantaneous reward. It's not smart. A better habit would be to, before you go to bed every night, lay your workout clothes on your table or get, you know, get things ready. So as soon as you wake up, you know, everything's ready for you to go and work out. Imagine that habit instead of a bowl of M&Ms. This is what I'm talking about here. Shaping your habits and shaping your environment to make success easy. So we'll move on to step six. Step six is to self-educate for at least one hour a day on your goal. If your goal is just to be successful in general, this is pretty easy because you can listen to podcasts like this. You can listen to the school of greatness, addicted to success, so many things, but your self-education never stops. Even Tony Robbins is still self-educating for one hour every day. What this is going to do is it's going to, for one, let you learn about your subject and learn new things. But secondly, and more importantly, it's going to immerse you in your goal. And if you see what's happening here, if you're, if you have your goals on your wall and you're creating habits that are shaping your goals and you're consciously thinking about what you're doing on a daily basis to get to your goals and you're reading about it every day, they're not just goals anymore. They are who you are. They're becoming a part of you and you're solidifying them in your life. You're immersed in your goals. And this is so much more powerful than just being an average dude who goes to the office and is like, hey, yeah, man, what's up, Frank? I'm trying to lose 10 pounds. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to the gym after work. And you go to the gym and then that's all you think about it. You live your life, you go to the gym for one hour a day. Instead, you are immersed in your goals. You're, you know, you're watching workout videos. You're reading books. You're going to succeed over the guy who's just going to the gym for one hour a day and not thinking about it. Trust me. This brings us to step seven, which is to visualize and trust. Daily visualization is so powerful. You are essentially, you're putting yourself at the finish line daily so you know what it feels like to be there. And you're living as that person in this moment for at least a few minutes a day. And then you come back to reality, present day, and you carry those feelings with you. So what I want you to do is just try daily visualization. Like imagine yourself standing in front of the mirror and seeing a six pack. Imagine how good it feels and feel people high-fiving your success and then come back to the present and trust and know that you're going to get there and be excited. Be grateful that you're going to achieve your goal and have that giddy anticipation for it. That is so powerful. Step eight is put in the work. So I told you we we're going to come back to that reverse engineering part and we reverse, reverse engineered our goal. Now it's time to put in the work and we've also immersed ourselves in our goal. So I'm telling you, if you're visualizing daily, if you've got your goals on the wall, if you're reading about it daily and you've created good habits, you're going to put in the work. You know, you're, you're, you're setting yourself up for success. There's no way you're going to do all those things and then decide not to go out and work out or not to go out and meet women. It's just not going to happen because it's not going to be congruent with what you're doing. When you, when you align your actions with your thoughts and your beliefs, that's when you'll start to achieve success. So you need to take what you wrote down when you reverse engineered, what you'd have to do every day. If it was approaching women or getting good with women, I'll have to you know, go to the gym and work out. I'll have to work on my conversation skills. I have to approach women at least three times a week. You know, Go out and do it. You know, Go out and do it. And a big thing that you need to think about here is to have your big goal in mind. Yes. If your big goal again is to lose 100 pounds, have it in mind, but then focus on each day and maximizing each day while enjoying the process. So if you can have your big goal in mind of losing 100 pounds, but then you, you can't be thinking long-term, like what can I do long-term to achieve that? You know, all you can do is do what you can do today and go to bed proud and one step closer to your goal. 
What can I do today to get one step closer to my goal? Baby steps will take you to the top of Mount Everest as long as you keep taking them. You should be taking steps towards your goal every single day. There are no off days. And this doesn't mean there are no rest days because when I have rest days, I consider them moving towards my goal because I have to have rest days because it makes me stronger the next day. But I'm always thinking about it in a strategic rest. So those are the first eight steps. And there are two more steps, but they're not specifically like the others. Number nine is called mandatory extras. Those first eight steps can definitely take you towards your goals alone. But there's some extra things that you can do that don't really fall into their own step that almost person does. And these are mandatory and they can be done along with everything else that you're doing. The first one is gratitude. Daily gratitude is the secret to success of virtually every success guru out there. Every time I hear a new person speak about success and how to be successful, they talk about daily gratitude. They say, I wake up in the morning and I thank the source, the creator for being here and a chance to go out and be religious. You don't have to be non-religious. Just be grateful to be here and be grateful to have a chance to go out and better yourself. And what I recommend doing is writing down every morning or every night five things that you're grateful for to start. This is a small habit and eventually you won't have to write it down and you'll wake up every morning, your feet will hit the ground and you'll be grateful to be alive and to have another day to go out and live. And this is so powerful. The second mandatory extra is self-love because there is no success if you do not love yourself. What would be the point of being skinny, and fit and jacked or having all these girls and achieving your goals if you hate yourself and you're not happy and you don't love yourself. For one, self-love will help you achieve your goals. And when you love yourself, people will see it and they'll like you too. So what I suggest for this is not to seek validation from anyone. You don't need to be validated from external sources. You need to pull your self-love from within. You need to realize how much of an incredible person you are. Celebrate your strengths. If you don't think you are a great person, write down all the things that make you you and that you can do that separate you from everyone else and really celebrate yourself. Be happy to be you. And the third mandatory extra is to take care of your body. So even if your goals don't have anything to do with health and fitness, you have to be taking care of your body. It's a no-brainer. 20 minutes of exercise a day is so essential to just being a healthy, happy, beautiful person and achieving anything. On top of that, eating healthy is incredible. I'm not going to go too deep into what this means. The exercise can be anything you want to do from walking to running to playing sports. And for eating healthy, you know, there's so many things to talk about. All I can really suggest right now is stop guzzling sugar down your down your throat. Stop drinking sodas and juices even and start eating good food good clean food lots of vegetables lots of healthy fats don't be scared of cholesterol because it's not bad for you if you don't believe me go to menprovement.com slash cholesterol and read all about it and just just be mindful of of what you're putting into your body because you can have the ultimate mind to shape success but your two parts, your three parts, you know, your mind, your soul, your body, if your body is not up to par, it's going to slow you down. So don't eat too many carbs and grains because this stuff is bad for you. And stick to healthy fats, proteins, meats, vegetables. Just keep it simple. It doesn't have to be crazy. But just, you know, just be mindful of what you're putting in your body. All right. This brings us to step 10 which is called going the extra mile. Now, you don't have to do these things that I'm about to list, but I'm telling you, they are amazing. And I attribute them to how great I feel every day and the success that I have achieved. The first one is cold showers. Cold showers are amazing. And they have over 15 health and self-improvement benefits. Seriously. You can go to menprovement.com slash benefits of cold showers and learn all about that. It's really cool stuff. They relieve depression. They help you lose weight. You know, they make you more alert. They do so many things. It's awesome. But I can tell you from experience that above all, they'll build strong willpower. There's nothing more powerful 
then waking up in the morning, you know, doing some good habits, make your bed, have a good breakfast, or before your breakfast, have a cold shower because it's setting you up for an awesome day, a win. It's a winning day. You've already done something that 99% of people are too chicken shit to do. So you're just going to be head and shoulders above everyone. And it's going to make you feel awesome. It's going to wake you up. You're going to be alert. It's just a really cool thing to do. And to add on to it, like a lot of people don't do this, but something that I do is towards the end of my cold shower now. And by the way, I start with hot because I don't know. It's really, if you can go straight cold after waking up, then you're, you're quite the man. But I start with hot for, for 10 minutes and then I do cold for like three minutes, but I let the cold water blast me on the forehead for the last 30 or 15 seconds while closing my eyes and just meditating almost and just until I can't feel it. And I find that is like stepped up my cold showers from like just superhuman to like ridiculously superhuman, but try it, try it for 30 days and tell me I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, you know, comment and let me know. The second extra that's not mandatory, but should be, but it's not, is being clean and organized. And this is amazing. Being clean and organized is one of my biggest self-improvement tips. When you aren't clean and organized, whether you run a business and you have a lot of things going on and you don't use to-do lists or your just room is a mess, you're overwhelmed with tasks and you're just overwhelmed in general. And when you're in this state, your nervous system is in a state of fight or flight and you produce different brain waves than you would if you were relaxed. So what happens here is you also start pumping out stress hormones and you you just you become cloudy. You have clouded thinking, you start to fatigue because of the stress hormones and the different brain waves. You can't think clearly, you can't think as clearly and you're less capable of producing greatness. You're less capable of feeling like going to the gym, you're less capable of holding good conversations with girls, you're just less capable of doing anything. So what I suggest is just be super clean and organized. Whether if it's in business, I want you to like have to-do lists. I want you to make a new to-do list every day and do one task at a time, not crossing not moving on to the next task until you cross the first one off. And just have a system. Even your computer should be organized. And then in general life, you should wake up and you should wake up to a clean room. I mean, I know you've all probably seen the movie Limitless. If you're into like improving yourself, it's awesome. If you haven't, check it out. But what's the first thing that Bradley Cooper does after he ingests NZT, the pill? Yeah, I know. He he fucks his, his landlord's wife, which is pretty funny. But next, he walks into his apartment and he looks around. And he's like this is not my place. I do not live like this. And he spends the next four hours cleaning his apartment, every dish, every little area. Why would a guy who just unlocked 100% of his brain go around and waste four hours cleaning his apartment when he could be doing anything? Because even he cannot perform in that mess. So if you're living at home with pizza boxes everywhere and you're just in this haze, you're not conscious, you're in this haze, you get up, for work, you've got 20 minutes to get ready, you're tripping over things, you go to work, you come home, you're too tired to clean, you're in a mess, you're not you're not creating success, you're not oozing success. I want you to get in the habit of being clean. The way you start doing it is to wake up every morning and make your bed. That's it. That's all I want you to start doing for now. Wake up every morning and make your bed. Tell me how good that feels. Like, I would encourage emails if this helps you to Sean at menprovement.com because I know this is amazing stuff and helps me. After a month of that, you're going to feel great. And the next step, you can start it whenever. I want you to start cleaning your dishes immediately after you eat. I don't want you to ever put a dish in the sink again and walk away. And I don't, I don't even want you to use a dishwasher. It is such a good habit to clean your dishes immediately after you eat, putting everything away. And then I want you to progress to never having a dirty room in your house. I want you to go to bed every night with your room completely clean. Don't go to bed until it's clean. And then what's this? what this is going to do is you're waking up every day at a clean slate. You're waking up every day. You get out of bed. You make your bed. You feel great. You do your habits. You have a cold shower. You make breakfast. You clean your dishes. And everything's clean. And you can move forward to produce and produce greatly. And it's amazing. So I highly recommend being clean and organized. The third extra that's not mandatory is another amazing one, and it's meditation. 
meditation is so powerful and it's another great habit to start doing because it will keep you conscious about what you're doing in your life. If you are getting the general gist of a lot of this, it's a becoming conscious of your daily activities and changing them and shaping them to fuel success because it's when you're on the perpetual treadmill of just, you know, living your life and not really being conscious about it is when you're not achieving your success. You don't have your GPS set and you can end up anywhere in life. You're going to wake up when you're 35 and, you you know, maybe you are already 35 or older and you're like, how did I get here? You can, you know, but you can change. You can take responsibility now. That's step one. But start meditating because this, for one, will help you incorporate other great habits into your life. It's like the ultimate starter habit because it makes you more conscious of just everything in general and will keep you relaxed in a state of alpha and delta brain waves where you can think clear and produce more. 20 minutes a day in the morning is all you need. I can't recommend it enough. And the last extra, which is definitely not mandatory because I know it's not from my experience, is to get live mentors and coaching. A lot of people like Lewis Howes and other guys recommend coaches so highly. They say it's one of their number one tips of success and I've coached a few people myself but I never had any coaches and other than coaches for sports and I never had any live mentors but the way I saw it is what that I had hundreds of mentors in all the great people that I was listening to every day in podcasts and the books that I was reading and I I consider them my mentors but you know if you can afford live coaching or you can get coaches everyone who does it says it's a game changer you know even relationship coaches, you know, work coaches, anything. It's definitely something that can take your success to the next level. All right, so those are the core 10 steps. But before we end this podcast, I want to leave you with one philosophy that will let you apply them correctly and actually achieve success. I want you to commit to the long game. Now, I know you've heard of a man named Leonardo da Vinci and I'm sure you would agree that he is a genius, but what you don't know is that he wasn't born a genius. He had over 10 years of failure after failure after failure, and he didn't get his break and paint the Last Supper until he was in his 40s. Nikola Tesla was broke and living on his parents' couch at the age of 30. Jim Carrey was homeless and couldn't get a role for years as he was busting his ass and working hard to become a great actor. My point is that success and improvement takes time and there are no shortcuts, so I don't want you to try to take any. If you try to lose weight with some crazy pill or a cleanse, I promise you that it's not going to stay off and in six months, you'll have the same weight that you have now and maybe more. But if you commit to taking your time and doing it correctly and losing one pound a week, your body will acclimate to the weight loss and you're not going to gain it back if you have a week's long vacation. Because when something takes time and you do it correctly, it is permanent. But when you do something and try to take shortcuts and do it fast, it's short lived. Think about get rich quick schemes. They may make you $3,000, but they're not going to be a permanent career and they're over in a few months. But if you work hard and build a big business and that takes years to come up, it's going to be something that lasts forever. And the same goes with getting girls. You can learn a couple gimmicks that will get you some girls, but they're not going to be the caliber of girls that you could get if you put in the years of hard work and went through the actual process to becoming a beautiful person and totally in touch with yourself and the kind of guy that can get any woman he wants. So make a commitment right now to not take any shortcuts and commit to the long game. And with that, I'll conclude it because that's it. These are the steps to improving your life in anything you do. And if you have some goal that you think that this doesn't apply to, I really encourage you to hit me up at Sean at menprovement.com and let me know because I don't think that there's one thing that this can't apply to. And if you just have a goal that it does apply to and you found this really inspiring and it really helped you, I would love to hear about it and connect with you and talk with you. You can hit me up at sean at menprovement.com because I love to connect with like-minded people. And if you have any of your own tips that weren't covered on here, head to menprovement.com slash MPP018 and leave a comment on the show notes and tell people what you do to achieve success. And I really encourage you to share this podcast with other people to help them better their lives as well. 
And if you do, CC me on the email. I would love to see it. It was great to have you guys here, and I really enjoyed doing this show, and I hope that this can really make a big impact on your life. So go out there and crush it and do whatever it is you want to do. And remember, never stop improving.